All right, guys, I'm so excited for today. Today, we're going to be talking about willpower and happiness and how to train it and how to create change, um, you know, for not only this week, but for your entire life. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and I just want to really, requ really quickly review what the 4M fat loss pyramid is and kind of like, um, I mean, today what we're going to be talking about really sort of li lies in more of the mindset aspect of things, but I just want to kind of cover really quick what the four M's are. So we've got mindfulness and mindset at the bottom. I believe that this is the most important piece to really achieving long-term fat loss because you need to have the right mindset. You need to be um, understanding like um, what things you should be doing in your life, how to set yourself up for success, right? And you can set yourself up for success by the way that you think, but also things that you do, such as the gratitude and mindfulness type activities that we're going to be covering a lot about. Okay, and then um, next important piece is movement. So that is um, just general movement. Um, so, you know, your goal should be to really just move as much as possible. I mean, don't complicate things, you know. Um, I just want you to prioritize movement over exercise every day of the week. Um, the more you move, that is like the, the simplest, best thing that you can do for belly fat um, and lowering your cortisol levels specifically and uh, making yourself more insulin sensitive, which just means increasing your ability to burn fat, putting you in the best position. Then, like, so those two things set you self, set yourself up for uh, maximum body fat loss. And then you can go ahead and dive into the sexy things such as meals and metabolics, okay, diet and exercise. But so basically what we're talking about is um, today is going to be more in that mindset piece, which is the topic that I love the most. So uh, I want to go ahead and get into it. So basically what I want to start off with um, is just saying that information is not transformation, Okay. That's why we're going to be going over this part um, because you can know everything in the world, but ultimately lifestyle is what you're fighting against. Okay, so I want to give you some of the latest psychology stuff and I'll probably skip through some of these slides pretty quickly just to make sure you guys are getting everything. And I, you know, because I just get really excited about these topics and I want to make sure I teach you everything. Okay, so what is happening right now in psychology is just amazing and fantastic, okay? It's very similar to what was happening, you know, five years ago or so with exercise. It's it's just a huge amount of new research and new approaches and new information um, that we now have about the way the brain works and how to help people change. And so I'm going to give you that today. When you when you first hear this stuff, you're going to have some practice with, with it. And hopefully I'm going to give you the most important aspects um, just like we did before and give you some key insights to understanding, you know, this is the way you really want to think about things. Okay. All right. So, ah, my pictures didn't come up. Oh no, that's terrible. Okay. Well, there's supposed to be three batteries here. Um, so you guys will just have to use your imagination. Okay. Um, so you have this willpower ba battery, okay? And you can think of your ab ability to have self-control as a battery. And some people have a very bad, a bit, very big battery that is huge and charged all the way up. And some people have a very small, tiny battery and it's completely drained. And this battery is really made up of three other batteries that charge it. And these are them, okay? Or at least... You, what you should see on here is three different batteries. I'm not sure, you know, good old technology. Um, but you should see a battery that's the, the, the physical battery up top. Um, and then there should be a battery on the left, which is your mental battery. And then a battery on the bottom, which is going to be your emotional battery. I'm a little frustrated, did not pop up, but we're going to roll with it. Okay. So just use your imagination that there's three batteries right there. And those three batteries make up your one willpower battery, okay? So um, you have these three other batteries that charge this one willpower battery. And these um, are your physical, emotional, and mental, okay? So the thing to understand is self-control 
the ability to have and maintain self-control is an exhaustible resource. Okay, and you've probably noticed it, but haven't really understood it like this. In other words, this idea that we have, that we used to have, that you either have willpower or you don't, is not true. Okay, your willpower can be drained. Um, your self-control can be drained, and it's drained by pretty much everything. Okay, the more decisions you have to make in a day, the lower um, the lower you um, your your self-control reserves are going to be. And this is the reason why um, many people get home from work from an all day event of, um, you know, of work and sitting down and eating and eating and eating and cannot keep themselves disciplined in staying on track or creating any change in their life because their self-control battery is completely drained. OK, and it could be that they're spending too much time at the gym or no time at the gym or too much time at work or or not pouring their personal self into, um, you know, being with loved ones or relationships, et cetera, okay? And so as a professional coach, I need to be able to assess that and deal with that, okay? Otherwise, I am powerless to help you guys, okay? Now, you certainly could take the approach that a lot of people take in the United States, which is to say that fat people are all just lazy gluttons, and if they don't have willpower, then, you know, they sort of, suck and they're worthless and they deserve what they get and blah, 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 except for one problem, okay, with that. And that's how come these these same people thrive at high power jobs and are amazing parents uh, and are disciplined in so many other ways, right? It just doesn't really add up, right? Because the thing is, what they're essentially doing, whether consciously or unconsciously, is they're putting all of their energy into charging one of these three batteries over the others. And they're just not really aware of this, okay? So the typical example is somebody who charges up their mental battery because let's say they are a high-powered lawyer, okay? And they excel at their job and um, their job and they're the best at their job, but they're morbidly obese um, and they're divorced because they neglected their emotional battery and their physical battery at the expense of the mental battery, okay? And also on the flip side, you know, let's talk about somebody who is obsessed with the gym and dieting or training for a competition or a bodybuilding show, and that's all they care about. They may not be fat, or maybe they are, okay? But chances are they're suffering from the same things. They're suffering in their marriage, their relationships, their financial success, right? So that's what we're doing on a conscious level or on an unconscious level, okay? You really wanna think of these batteries um, as something as you can charge each up separately and together overall to make your overall um, willpower battery, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and th go through each of them and how you charge them, okay? So how do you charge the physical battery, okay? So exercise will charge it up, but here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing with exercise, not too much, because exercise, as you know, can also be very draining, right? But exercise in the right amount will charge the physical battery. Also, if you simply shut off the physical battery for a little while, you know, that will charge it up, like going to sleep, getting your eight to 10 hours of sleep. And so we're making sure you're getting plenty sort of, um, you know, just downtime where you are resting a little bit, okay? So sleep is a huge one here for the physical battery. And stress drains it tre tremendously, right? Stress drains all of these. Um, foods obviously increase the phys physical battery and the physical energy, okay? And the wrong foods will drain it, right? I mean, you know what it's like to kind of like get off track like around Christmas time, just eating all these cookies and stuff. Like it drains the battery. You drain that motivation, that willpower, that go, that, you know, um, that self-control. But so you're mainly looking at exercise, food, and sleep here for the physical battery, okay? And maybe some walking as well, okay? Um, one other thing about exercise, though, is that exercise is, is kind of unique, okay? Um, exercise um, will charge all of these up, okay? So some things can charge all of them. So for example, sleep, will charge not only the physical, but it'll also ch charge the mental cognitive battery. I wish that battery was on there, but it's okay. And the mental battery is the hard one, right? So how do you charge that one up? 
okay? And what drains that? Well, obviously, any decision, any kind of decision you make, um, any decision making or problem solving or anything like that will drain this too, okay? And to charge up your mental battery, you sort of need to shut it off. And to shut it off, you can simply switch to the physical battery or the emotional battery and it will charge it up, okay? So basically doing anything but the mental activity to char is what will charge it up, okay? So just taking a break from it. So here's an example. If that lawyer, instead of just working his mental battery or her mental battery over and over and over, you know, or an entrepreneur, okay, he or she decides to get a workout in midday, okay? Go for a nice leisurely walk at the end of the day, eat small frequent, um, you know, intel intelligent meals. Um, they pick up their phone and call uh, their wife or a significant other for a good laugh or a good talk in the middle of the day. That would be the emotional side of things, okay? All those things will charge up the mental battery simply by getting away from his or her desk or his or her job. And doing that, that makes sense, right? Um, you know, also things like meditation, hot Epsom salt baths, anything that sort of gets you away and focusing on the physical is going to help you with the mental, okay? So anything that gets you away from the mental, whether it be emotional or physical, will help charge the mental battery. And then there's the emotional batteries, stuff like physical affection, laughter, um, even watching like funny movies, forcing a smile is actually, um, research has shown to help, can actually charge this up even if you feel sad. If you smile, it registers in the brain and charges up your emotional battery a little bit. Even if you force a laugh, okay? So like, I mean, how cool is that, right? So the point here is to understand that, you know, when you're taking an assessment of yourself, you should be looking and being like, I am having an awful hard time being compliant with X, like whether it be um, choosing the right foods or doing the right training or not doing too much training and not getting caught up in your old patterns. And so you want to be asking yourself, okay, so where am I drained? And by the way, if your emotional battery is drained, you're less likely to want to like go to work or want to go work out, right? Because you probably have drained your physical energy as well. So these things can pull, pull you if you want to charge up that mental battery. Um, you're using your emotional battery and you're using your physical battery to do so, okay? So you're draining those. And all these batteries together, physical, emotional, mental, charge up that one big willpower battery, okay, self-control battery. They all figure into it, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So you don't actually have self-control or willpower. It's not genetically bestowed upon you. That's why I like to call it more of like a skill, like a skill power, okay? Because you can learn how to charge yourself and your self-control, okay? And there's a reason why some people don't feel like going to the gym and they want sugary, fatty, salty foods every single night. And part of it's because they're just not balancing these three batteries that go into this one self-control battery. So we can either help them with this or just assume that they're all lazy gluttons. And, you know, as a health prof professional, I would say that if we understand this research, we can do a lot of good for people when a lot of coaches would probably just be like, you know, what you're not you know, you're not compliant because you're just lazy, right? And that's not usually the case. So, you know, usually one of their batteries is so drained. And, you know, I'm sure hopefully you guys can kind of relate to this, you know? I mean, I know I can absolutely relate to this. And it is incredibly important for me to be balanced in order for me to be motivated and, and driven and fueled up in like all the right areas. So, um, and I look at this on a daily basis, you know, if not almost an hourly basis, really. Okay. Yeah, actually, I'd say I do it more an hourly basis. Um, and so the other way to look at these batteries is you can look at them like channels on a TV and you really can't be on two channels at once, right? You really can't be on the physical channel and on the mental channel at one time. And so if you want to be on the mental channel, uh, you're on that channel, which means the physical channel and the emotional channel are cut off. And if you want to go onto another channel, you got to hit the button and go to the other channel. I just realized we don't really use remotes anymore. Everybody's like on their laptops, but you just got to hit a button, right? 
Okay, so the good news is when you're on the physical channel doing exercise and things like that, you're going to be charging the mentally and emotional naturally, so long as you're not overdoing the physical channel. And so that's the one great thing about the physical battery is that it can charge these others up, okay? It can charge the emotion. And that's why we feel good when we exercise, right? Like that's why we feel mentally, mentally charged up when we exercise. And if we don't, by the way, you know, some people simply don't exercise because they don't feel, it doesn't make them feel good. And then we've got kind of a big issue, right? Um, so you see how that this drives you a little bit to sort of understand that that's the battery that's damaged if it's not charging the others. It's the one that we need to work on, okay? Food and sleep and exercise with in the right way. And usually um, by switching channels, you can charge the other channels, okay? Usually, but I'm hoping that by viewing this from a battery point or um, a channel point of view, you can start pinpointing in um, your, you know, either emotional or mental weaknesses, okay? It's just sometimes it's, it's just helpful to get the insight, right, to understand, okay, that that's how you can assess your willpower. And that's just what I'm basically saying here, all right? And so I want to show you that the self-control battery is drained by so many things, okay? But the, there's the batteries. Interesting. So there you go. I don't know what happened there, um, but that there's the three batteries. And typically, just so you know, like most people, um, it's the emotional battery that is drained, right? We're not spending time with others. They're not, you're not spending time to relax and be with people and create connection and things like that. Okay. And so what I want to show you that, um, is, is that the self-control, um, battery is drained by so many things. Okay. But the number one thing that drains it by the way, I didn't realize. Okay. The number one thing that drains it um, is planning things and making decisions and self-editing, okay? And so what I mean is that when you look in the mirror and you self-edit yourself and say like, oh my God, I just I look like, you know, Pillsbury Doughboy today or, um, or you have to make men you have to make decisions like I got to do this and I got to do that today and I got, oh my God, I got this deadline and that and, you know, the, that kind of thinking drains your battery. You know, if you feel guilty, um, it drains your battery. Okay. Um, if you, um, if you know, like if your surroundings are like very cluttered or, you know, not organized, that can drain your battery. If you're, um, you know, having poor sleep, low blood sugar, poor foods, you know, all that stuff sort of drains your battery. Um, so yeah, and then self-criticism, self-restraint, those kind of things that drain it as well. And they all relate to one another. You know, the mental battery, the physical battery, they all relate and they all get charged up. You know, they all charge up that one battery. And you, the things that, you know, are really great for charging that battery are the things like gratitude. And research has shown this kind of stuff. Like, you know, self-acceptance, self-love, gratitude, sleep, naps, rest and recovery activities, such as uh, meditation and slow walking, um, you know, laughing and um, hanging out with your loved ones, connection. So you just basically want to load your day up with as many things that charge your battery as possible and in the right amounts between the physical, emotional, and mental, okay? And the final thing that I want to say about these and how I, um, why I wanted to show you guys this insight really quickly is because what most people do in the Western world is that, you know, people in the U.S., they do not want to take any downtime, Right? And um, the pace is just ridiculously fast. There's no time to do anything. And it's so bad that they decide that, you know, people decide that they're just going to fill up time when they have free time. And so they have to do, you know, they end up doing something else and something else and something else. And so it's no wonder that people are becoming overwhelmed and can't keep up, right? It used to be that everything was closed on Sunday and people had forced downtime in society. And now everything is open and you're expected to work and expected to go to the gym and and do all this stuff that has a consequence. And so you should be looking at this and realizing ultimately if you want to change, you have to make room for change, okay? You have to cha charge up that battery if you're going to change, okay? And Because if, if there's no more charge left in these batteries, you're not going to be able to make that change. Okay, so um, I do want you to do an activity, but we're going to actually focus on this. Uh, eventually, I'm going to just, I'll mention this at the end, but there is an exercise I want you to do. I want you to basically rank yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 in each of those batteries, okay? But we're going to do that at the end.
Okay. So let's go ahead and um, kind of switch gears um, into the uh, happiness model. So I hope you guys are liking this stuff and I hope, you know, you find it useful to you. Um, I really want to talk a bit about happiness because I think this stuff is some of the most important stuff to know. Um, we start talking about this stuff, you know, like in somebody who's going body change or lifestyle change from, you know, um, competitor to health or something like that. And you want to ask yourself, what is it that you're really after? What is it that you really want? Right. And usually the answer is, you know, we sort of just want to feel good in our bodies, right? We just want to be happy. We want to enjoy life. We want this sort of promise of happiness, right? And, um, you know, people think that if they are sort of, um, you know, if they have this great body, that all of a sudden they're just going to be happy. And trust me, guys, you will not because I had quite an amazing body at one point and I was everything but happy, okay? Okay. And I think as a fat loss coach and as somebody wanting to make change on their own, we should be aware of what really goes into happiness so that you can find the things that do charge you up and make you happy um, so that you can charge up your batteries, your emotional battery, and you're more likely to have the self-control to do what you're telling yourself to do or that I'm telling you to do, okay? But instead, many people and coaches ignore the fact that, you know, a lot of people are just miserable in the first place. You know, um, you're miserable in your relationships, in your job. You're miserable in multiple areas of your life. And I'm expecting you to have self-control by doing this diet plan or this training plan when you're simply not happy, you know. And so that's got to be taken care of first in my mind, you know. And that's why I've got mindset at the bottom. And so it's my job to help you guys get, you know, give you those insights around that. You know, this stuff can make you more happy. But there's other things that go into that and we should, in my mind, we should be aware of that because it impacts the self-control battery. You cannot do what you need to do if you are miserable and depressed and anxious and all these things, right? It just makes it so much harder. And so that's why I want you to understand the happiness model um, that I'm going to be going through through right now so we can then find the things um, you know, that you need to be doing to help bolster your self-control, okay? So what I'm showing you right in here is based on research, okay? This is what they sort of shown in psychology, um, what, you know, research shows to, to make the biggest difference. Um, the first aspect of happiness is just positive emotions, okay? Um, so like this feeling good, right? We can, we can kind of fake this too. We can smile. We can try to laugh. Someone gives us a compliment, any kind of positive emotion. But the thing is, is that it's, it's really kind of short-lived, right? The next is engagement. Simply being engaged in a project um, has an awful lot to do with happiness. And I'm really big on this one. Um, there's a saying by one of my favorite poets, Rumi, and he makes a statement about the, the lion is the most handsome when he's hunting for food, which essentially speaks to this um, idea that like when you are hungry and you're craving and you have desire for something, you will be engaged. And that is when you are at your happiness, right? and you're most beautiful. And too often people don't have that engagement. And like, this is kind of like those things like where, like when hours can pass by in a day and it, you just didn't even notice, you know, like th you should be doing more of those things, right? Um, and I like this because this is exactly what I try to do in my whole process of, you know, coaching. When I'm talking about um, the HEC process, the hunger energy craving process, I want you to be engaged as a client or, um, yeah, as a client in the process, rather than me just like handing over a set of macros and telling you what to do. My clients, you know, and, and my clients start to like this, right? They start to enjoy this process of being a detective. And I want them to be engaged and I want you to be engaged. And, and that's where the autonomy piece comes in, okay? And um, like, just like I'm telling you this week, like I'm, I'm telling you, um, okay, we're gonna do this together. We're gonna start off with this plan and you're going to adjust the plan. That's your job, you're engaged, you're on a journey. And this, the process is what matters. And, and together, we're going to figure this out. We're gonna figure out how to create the best diet and lifestyle plan for you. And um, positive relationships, that's the next one, okay? Obviously, fat gain is contagious, right? And so is fat loss, all right? You will generally be 
Research shows this. Research tells us that you would generally be the body composition of your five closest friends. Okay, and if your family tends to be fat, chances are you're going to be fat. And not because you actually inherited the genetics, but because you inherited a way of thinking and a way of eating and a way of being. And that's going on all the, all the time, right? It's going on all the time. So from the fat loss perspective, not only do you want positive relationships and good people in your life, but you want to look around yourself and ask yourself, who am I hanging out with? Who are Who am I having lunch with? And tap them into the fact that, or tap into the fact that, you know, um, you know, no one, by the way, is going to change you. And if you want peop- the people around you to change, you have to change, okay? But the relationships are definitely part of this, okay? And then there's meaning. Um, a lot of people don't have purpose from what I've seen. They don't have purpose behind, behind why they're doing this. And I often like to say that, you know, being and looking great in a bathing suit is not a big enough purpose to make a huge body change. It's just not. You have to know, you have to, you know, well, actually, sometimes having a heart attack isn't even a big enough reason for people, okay? Um, So meaning, you have to have meaning. You got to know why you're doing, you know, what you're set out to do. Um, And so, like, this red light goes off for me when someone says, like, oh, I got this thing that I'm going to, you know, I want to, I got this high school reunion or whatever, and I want to get in shape for that. And I'm just like, look. I know I, you know, I can get you ready for that, but guess what? It's not going to last. Okay. And I've got to have this conversation conversation with people. Um, because if that's the only reason you're doing this, you know, it's just not going to last long term. However, if someone comes and says, Hey, you know, my kid is obese, um, and, or anorexic or something like that. And I don't know what to do about it. And I want to be a better, better, better mother, father, or I want to experience more of life because I know, you know, I've only got one shot at this. Um, then I, you know, that is a, that's a bigger reason, right? Um, and somebody's going to actually, you know, you're going to have, um, when things get in your way, you're going to have something that's bigger and is going to help keep you on track. Okay. So, and then the other piece is achievement, right? There's part of this where people do need some, need to see some positive results. And that's the hard part here because I cannot promise you that I cannot promise you results. And that's why this model that I taught you with hunger, energy, cravings thing is great because if you feel better energetically, that's a positive. If you are without hunger and cravings, that's a positive. And so you need to look for the bright spots in what you're doing the healthy aspects of what you're doing, how you're feeling, and whether you're sleeping better and having more energy and more alive, right? It can't just be based off achieving a desired fat loss goal or a certain number on the scale. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? All right, last piece, creating change, which I love all this stuff. All right, so if you guys wanted to read one book um, that is like super cool um, and is essential for people who are interested in like understanding the psychology of change. Um, There's this book called Switch by Chip and Dan Heath. And this book is phenomenal in terms of being able to teach you about like what it takes to change. But I'm going to give you the synopsis of what this book is about, which is just this slide. Um, So, excuse me, there's this idea that you have one brain and two minds, right? Excuse me. And one mind is the unconscious mind and the other mind is the conscious mind. Well, they talk about it at, um, as the unconscious mind is like an elephant and the conscious mind is like the writer, a writer sitting on top of the elephant. And now we all try to reason with our conscious mind and we tell our conscious mind, you know, you should sleep better, you should eat better, you should, um, you know, do this better and all these things. But really it's our unconscious mind is really what's in control and um, is based on emotions and reward. And so if you want to change somebody, you can't just go at it through the conscious mind. All right. Because if that elephant gets spooked or afraid or gets hungry, there's no amount of pulling that you can do to get that thing to where you want to go. You know, um, it's going to go where it wants to go, you know, and you're just long for the ride. Okay. So you need to understand this. So when you change, you first have to do what you first have to do is direct the writer, your, um, unconscious mind, um, or sorry, your conscious mind. Sorry. 
and you need to be given clear directions on what to do, whether you know you do that for yourself or whether you hire a coach and I do that for you. You need to know what to do. Okay, so you need to um, you need to direct the writer. You need to know where you are going. What exactly am I doing? And this is sort of that mental aspect of the three batteries, right? And then you need to motivate that elephant. And so this is the the emotional part of the battery. Okay. And by the way, motivation, inspiration, two different things. Okay. So hopefully, like, well, I'll just explain it. So motivation is is borrowed, right? And it's very short term can be here one minute and gone the next. And then inspiration comes from within. It's the difference between like giving a man a fish and then teaching a man a fish. You know, I can give him a fish or I could teach him to fish, right? And inspiration is the teaching, teaching him, okay? So I want people to be inspired. I want like, yeah, I, I want you to be inspired. So how do you get inspired? I have to help you find a meaning and a purpose behind why you're doing what you're doing. And that's bigger than just fitting into a bathing suit and looking good, right? So we have to figure out that why. And then we have to shape the path. And this is where the coaching comes in. This is where I help you shape that environment in a way that is beneficial for you. So let me give you an example of how this would work. You know, someone comes in to see me and I found out, I find out that they have like a busy job. They live alone. Um, they're newly divorced. They, you know, have their kids on the weekend. They have a lot going on. And they've gained weight, right? They've gained a lot of weight. The first thing I want to do is say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, um, I'm going to teach you this HEC model, this HEC model. And I want you to try to balance your hunger, energy, and cravings. And to do that, we're just going to basically, um, you know, we're going to start off with these three meals, just like I've told you. Um, and we're going to add protein and veggies to each meal. And, um, when you come back, we're going to see if you're going to check back in with what your hunger, energy, and cravings are like and see if you got any results, okay? So very clear directions on what you're doing, right? So now you're clear. You got that one thing on your mind, um, which is to add more protein and veggies, and then we motivate the elephant, okay? And so maybe we talk about the kids, and, you know, um, you said uh, you were having problems with this and that and um, that you want to have energy to play with them, so... The idea is to be like, okay, well, you know, um, uh, in order to provide the most for your kids, um, if you eat right, if you're, um, if you eat right, you're going to have more energy to work harder on your job and save more money and provide for your kids and send them off to college. And if you eat right and do the right things, you can have more energy to play with your kids and those kind of things. So you want to tap into that, that bigger purpose. Okay. Then we talk about how you're going to do it, right? Like the rules I laid out in, you know, in the beginning. You're going to eat between these times. You're going to prep your food ahead of time. You know, that's that's me shaping your environment, by the way, okay? And so that that's me directing the writer and shaping the environment, okay? So you have to do all those things. And research in psychology shows that, um, you know, this, you'll want to write this down because it's the most important thing with psychology. It shows that, there's one thing you can do that will determine someone's success above everything else that I've really kind of talked about. I, you know, yeah, about everything I've, I've just showed you. And it's called an implementation plan. So that's what this slide is all about. Okay. And all it is, is it's really just, it's called an implementation plan, but it's really just like a behavior plan. Okay. Um, and this is what you need to answer for yourself. Okay. Which hopefully you've already done because these questions were, um, set out in the beginning. Okay. In your, um, uh, like beginner guide. So the first question is, why are you doing this? What is the point? Why are you embarking on this body change? That taps into what your purpose is, right? You have to explore that. Why, you know, why is this important? And just so you know, looking good is not going to be a good enough answer for this. Okay. It's got to be going, it's got to go deeper than that. Second, what are you going to do? So hopefully I've made that easy on you because you're basically going to say, well, I'm eating three meals per day with one meal containing a starch, and if my hunger, energy, and cravings are out of check, I will add more protein and veggies to each meal. Simple, okay? When are you going to do it? Okay, so when are you going to eat your protein? And you'll say, um, okay, well, I'm gonna have one at 8 a.m. Uh, when I get up, I'm gonna have another one, a protein shake or chicken breast at noon, and then I'm going to have um, them at dinner as well, right then, okay? And um, here's the, Here's the next most important part, okay? Question four is how, OK? 
Okay, now you have to figure out and predict and think ahead about all these things and obstacles that are going to get in the way of you doing this. How are you going to do this? You know, well, you say, I'm going to cook 12 chicken breasts on Sunday night. Okay, but what happens if you end up at a fast food place because you forgot to bring your Tupperware with chicken in it? What happens then? Oh, well, I'm going to, you know, order chicken with salad. Okay, so what happens if you run out of chicken breast and you're at home and you don't have it? And you say, or you think to yourself, you know, oh, I'm going to open up a can of tuna, you know, well, you know, because that'll be like a substitute, right? So in other words, what you're doing is you're thinking out ahead and predicting every single thing that can go wrong, because chances are it will go wrong, and creating a plan for because, a plan, a plan because there is no such thing as a perfect day. Okay, and so that's what I'm doing is getting you to practice this. Okay, so um, we've kind of we've basically um, yeah, this is a like something that's going to make a huge difference, um, you know, for you and it's going to change the process and it has helped a ton of my clients. And um, it takes you know really everything to account is just by going and answering these these questions. And um, that's basically all I wanted to cover for today. We covered quite a bit of stuff, but. You know, hopefully it was really helpful for you in understanding how to really set yourself up for the best position to succeed, not only this week, but for life. And what I want to end with is, you know, I want to give you two activities for today. If you have yet to do them, because maybe you've already done them, is answer the implementation questions, okay, that I just asked, um, and write those answers down. So you must write them down with pen and paper. And then the second thing is I want you to go ahead and go back to the emotional, mental, physical battery and rank yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 on each of those batteries that make up your one willpower battery and figure out where you need to make some changes. What battery is being drained? How is it being drained? And how can you charge each battery up so that you're having this balance? Okay. All right, guys. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.